Hi, my name is BC Hoffman. And I'm Adrian Bustamante. And today on Recipe Wars, we are doing clam chowder. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, just note to all viewers, I don't like New England Patriots, but we're doing New England clam chowder. So, eh, damn you, Tom Brady. And, damn you. Yeah, and the tank top. The tank top <laughs> means something. Southies too. everywhere. Yeah. Unite. <laughs> it's nice. So, a little man chowder for you guys. So, that being said, let's get started. Yeah. Um, I think both of our recipes are really cut and dry and, and pretty go to basic gusto in your face. I'm doing Alton Brown's recipe, um, and he takes it as traditional as it can get. Uh, just shy of coming over the boat from uh, Europe. Just shy. Just shy. <laughs> I'm doing Emerald Agassi's Fall River Chowder. Um, not sure why he calls it Fall River, but it is, again, a basic straight cut and dry chowder. We've got the clams, got the bacon. I'm doing bacon as my base. So I'm rendering that, but you're rendering something else. Salt pork. Salt pork. Yes. Mm, not pork salt. Not South Park. Salt pork. Salt pork is actually uh, the sides, the back, and the front of the carcass. Uh, of the pig, and it's actually just salt cured. There you go, there you have it. Let's get started. Boom. So I'm gonna take mine, you're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna render our bacon. Render, and render. our so salt pork. Uh, rendering, what's rendering you're asking? Rendering is basically taking your pork product, throwing it in a hot pan, and getting these bad boys nicely browned and having a nice amount of fat left over on the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's rendering. Gotta love that fat flavor coming from coming in your chowder, you know? Yes. Mm. So what would you say is the biggest difference between bacon and pork salt? Salt pork is, salt uh, pork. is, is salted, is salt cured, um, and bacon is smoked. So, I mean, really they both come from pork belly and the sides of the carcass of the actual pig, but that's the only difference. That's it, bottom line. So that one has a little bit of a more smoky flavor. This one's more salty. Um, and they both work really well with chowder. Now what's the difference between New England clam chowder, Ooh, you say? And, and Manhattan, Manhattan clam chowder. Now that, my friends, is, is, is a whole lot of gross to yeah. me. I'm not a big fan of Manhattan clam chowder because I don't like tomatoes in my clam chowder. So yeah, cream and potatoes should be your base, not tomatoes. It's just not what I like, Agreed. but whatever. Full wholeheartedly agree. Now I'm using, once this is done rendering, I'm actually using onions, celery, and carrots. Are you using any vegetables in yours? Or? I'm doing potatoes and onions, but what's really cool about this one is Alton Brown uses canned clams, but he also uses fresh clams. So we're gonna use the combination thereof. Um, when looking for good clams, one of the tips that's definitely recommended is tap them. If it sounds hollow, you don't want it. If it sounds like it's full and uh, makes just a loud noise, <laughs> that's the good one to get. Hollow means that it's, uh, it's filled with basically mud, and you don't want that. What's the name of a hollow clam? What do they call it? Quick, A quick. mudder. It's called a mudder. A mudder. Go ask your mudder. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Now, those are his clams. My clams are fresh clams. So I'll be adding these a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, we use fresh. We're done. I'm rendered. Are you rendered, my friend? I am rendered. Now, I don't know if we mentioned rendering, but when you're rendering at home, Make sure you're actually cooking it on a very low heat because you don't want your bacon to burn. You just want to kind of suck all the fat out of that bacon, have it in the base of your pan, and then you can go from there. Now, I am not removing my bacon, but this gentleman is removing his bacon. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm removing my bacon, but I'm keeping my fat that's in the bottom of my pan. Yes. That's all just added flavor. This is more of like an accoutrement or garnish for the actual chowder. And now, while my bacon fat and bacon are in there, I'm gonna be adding my celery, my onion, and my carrots. As, or as Emeril Lagasse likes to call it, mi pois. Oh, my, my, my <laughs> trinity, my mi pois. It's trinity. Yeah, but, Emeril. Now, I'm gonna saute these up until the onions start to get translucent, the vegetables start to kind of wilt a little bit, and uh, we'll move on from there. But yeah, and this I'm, guy's just picking out bacon. I'm picking out bacon, and then I'm actually gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna throw my onions in and get those nice and sweaty. That'll take about roughly, Ah, five minutes to do. And once they're translucent, I am going to throw in my potatoes. Ah, sweaty onions. Mmm. I like my onions that sweaty. Yeah. I have about five minutes as well, so once this is all done, we'll come back. So 
So we just finished sauteing our onions and I am ready to throw in my potatoes. Note to viewers out there, these are potatoes. They got oxidized, meaning oxygen hit them and we had them out for a little too long and not sitting in water, so they are brown now. But they're still good, they're great, and they're going in a chowder, so it really doesn't matter. You didn't just get potatoes on the cheap? <laughs> uh, well, they're dollar store potatoes. No, no, they oxidized. Sorry about that, viewers at home. So I'm gonna throw my potatoes in here, I'm gonna stir them around in the remainder of the bacon fat and sauteed onions, get them nicely coated, and then I'm gonna throw in my milk just enough so it covers the potatoes. That's gonna then cook for roughly, depending on how small you actually cut the potato, I'd say five to 10 minutes, bare minimum. It could go anywhere up to 15 to 20 though. What are uh, you doing? Well, I've added some salt and pepper to my mirepoix and bacon. Now that that's in there, what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of flour to it or create a little bit of a roux, if you will, oh. or start to thicken up my soup before I put my stock in there or my clam juice. So I'm just gonna mix this around, make sure I kind of get all that, uh, that flour cooked out of there so you get that taste, but it won't really bother you as much just because we're gonna be adding so much extra stuff in here. It's not gonna really be an issue. But we'll be doing this, and then next up for me is about two cups of, excuse me, ooh, we got four cups of clam juice. Speaking of which, so the recipe calls for two cups, but Alton Brown actually suggests having at least four cups backed up, so I'm gonna get two more cups in here because I need to cover my potatoes. Ah, uh, yes. So, so I've got two cups of cream I'm gonna throw back in here, cover them potatoes. All Judith, right. Judith Jones is next to you now. Okay. Potatoes. Potatoes. All right, so this is starting to thicken up just a little bit. I'm gonna take some bay leaves, toss them in here as well, and then comes the clam juice. So we got four cups of clam juice come flying in. Now once this is in here, fly, flew. You're gonna let it come to a boil. It's gonna take a few minutes to come to a boil. Once that comes to a boil, we're gonna add a few more extra pieces to the puzzle. Yeah. Now, the few extra pieces you're gonna ask yourself are what? Yes, we're gonna go in with the clams. Now you can get them canned, you can get them fresh. Again, my recipe is using both. I'm gonna steam these, but these only take about three minutes to steam, so I'm not gonna do that quite yet um, because this is gonna take at least 10 minutes right here. Um, and then I've got the canned clams. Now canned clams are cooked, so you wanna put these in at the very end because they're already cooked and it'll just become mush otherwise. Granted, we are gonna use a food processor, so it's still gonna become mush, but it'll still have texture and that's what you want. So I'll be adding my potatoes once I add my cream to this dish. So I'm gonna wait for this to come to a boil, add my cream, add my potatoes, let those become fork tender, and then I'll be adding my clams. Fork tender. Fork tender. Now, fork tender is just what it sounds like. I'm gonna stick a fork in it. If it's tender enough for my fork to stick and for me to pull it out and take a bite, we're good. That's what she said. I like tong tender. Um, and basically, that's where I can basically just kinda of smush them a little bit with my tongs. That's what I'm going for. Tong tender. <laughs> So this has come to a boil. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of my thyme and then immediately throw in my potatoes until they get fork tender. Did you like my thyme reference? It was, nice, it was a nice reference. I'm glad it was slight, but still good. <laughs> All right, so again, just let these kind of get in there, mix in, let them tenderize a little bit, and then what are we waiting on with you? We're waiting on my uh, potatoes to be tongue tender. Ooh. I just created that term, by the way. Tender. I like it. Again, once these potatoes become uh, tender enough, I'm gonna add my cream, as well as my clams, and then we'll be pretty much done. And viewers at home, you're probably wondering, why does he have a giant sheet pan on top of his pot? Well, the reason why is because this quickens the process, and we're steaming it, getting it nice and tender, so that's why. He doesn't have a top big enough to cover his pot, basically, is what happened. <laughs> I bet you viewers at home are like, why does he have two pots? And if you weren't, now you are, because no, I just weren't. implied that. But anyway, that being said, I've got two pots. The small pot right here in front I'm gonna turn on, and the reason for that is it's time to steam some clams. So in this pot, I have steam basket. Steam, steam basket. Steam basket. Steam basket. And I have clam juice. I'm gonna throw that in. This clam juice is from the canned clams. That's right, because it came in there. So I'm gonna throw that in there. And then I'm gonna throw in my clams in about mm, two minutes once this actually is getting hot and pretty much boiled, I'd say about three minutes realistically. I'm gonna take my cooked clams, I'm gonna put those 
in my mixture of cream and potatoes and onions and bacon fat. There's a lot of staccato in your voice just now. That's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> I'm actually really excited about this because uh, mm. I've been eating nonstop the uh, salt pork. Oh yeah, can I have some? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> um, okay. My potatoes are fork tender, so I'm gonna add a little bit of cream. What do you say? Do it. Mm-hmm, here we go. Now it's about two cups of cream. The potatoes being in there have added more starch to my soup, so it's actually added to the thickness of the soup as well. Now it's time to get a little cream in there. Get it creamy. flavor. That's a great segue. So, you know, where do you stand? Are you on the, I want it to be thicker, or do I want it to be a thinner soup? I like thinner soup, because I, like I like bread bowl clam chowder. That was like my favorite. We don't have bread bowls here today. But I like thin, thin clam chowder in a bread bowl, my favorite. See, I, I fell in love with the clam chowder that I had at uh, the Legal Seafood Test Kitchen in Boston. It was amazing, hands down, and they have a really thick consistency to it. Not Legal Seafood, but the Legal Seafood Test Kitchen. That's where they test all their products, and that's like the, the, the amazing one versus like the, uh, the fast food version, so to speak. Um, not like Legal Seafood's fast food, but anyway. Um, that being said, I like it thicker. I like it to have that consistency. And I think the thicker it is, it's better in a bread bowl, personally. Personally. Hey, hey, you know, that's why we do this. That's why we do this show. Yes. So I am, I'm going oh, right good. here with the boiling. Oh, that's I'm... good, guys. <laughs> I just had a taste. That's good. Woo! It's nice. <laughs> I'm throwing my, my clams right in here. Make sure they go in the basket. This is going to take no more than three minutes to steam them. See this smile? Because the soup's so good. I can't even lie, I love both these, these recipes, so it's, it's gonna be interesting to see which one is the winner, because right. they're both really good. How you feeling? I'm, I'm feeling good. Feeling I'm good? feeling good, feeling, feeling great. Good. My cream's in there. Now I'm gonna take my clams and throw them in the pot. We're gonna simmer it for about two minutes once they're inside. After that, I got a little bit of cayenne left. I got some parsley left. That's gonna be it for me. Yeah, I, just, I got the parsley and, and I've got my uh, salt pork, which is on, clams. almost completely done. Here we go, clams. <laughs> almost, almost gone. Almost gone. I should be saving it for the soup. But... Nah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Chowder. 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 How's your, how's your tasting already? Has, has it tasting? Yeah. It's... I mean, obviously I won't taste it yet because I'll defeat the purpose of this whole show. Yeah. But uh, well. how's it going? And that tastes pretty stupendous. Um, so if you're using salt pork at home, just make sure you add salt after you add the salt pork because the salt pork uh, is gonna add a lot of salt to your soup. It's also gonna dry out your insides, like MSG almost, I mean, as it did with Adrian. Yeah, this, uh, yeah exactly. <laughs> this, little, I mean, this little piece is like a little salt lick. I mean, this, this little thing right here, so imagine, I mean, all this. It's a salt lick with bacon. But it's good. All right, my clan's been simmering. I'm gonna throw a little cayenne pepper in there. A little flavor and color. Got some parsley as well. Mix them all up. Now, Emerald added some sweet corn. I'm not gonna add sweet corn. I just don't feel like it. It's not my thing. Yeah. You know, there's no, to me, there's no really reason for it, but if you like sweet corn at home, feel free to throw it in there. But, uh, I mean, mine's tasting good, it's looking good. Your clam's looking like they're getting ready to get out, get out of that pot. I got about in the 30 other. more seconds right here and they're ready to pop up in here. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna put this on simmer and uh, wait for this guy to get done. Yes. The last thing we're gonna add actually is the leftover clam juice. We're gonna throw that in here. Then we're gonna have the actual clams just sitting in there as basically a garnish. You aren't gonna use the steam clams. You could but we're just gonna use that more as a garnish on top. Um, and then I'm gonna take my blender right here, my hand blender, and I'm gonna throw that in there and emulsify till it's the consistency that I want, which is gonna kinda be chunky, but not too chunky, semi-smooth, nice in between. Semi-smooth. Semi-smooth man chowder, just for you ladies at home and gentlemen. Ooh. Hey, you got kids at home. <laughs> and kids. Wait, sorry okay. guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I feel inappropriate making that comment. As you should. All righty. Check this out. Boom. Ready and excited. 
So right here, I've got my clams. I'm gonna grab these bad boys. Be careful, be careful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have hands made of pure leather like DC at home, that might have not been the best way to take your clams out of the, uh, the pot. <laughs> Kitchen hand is a beautiful thing. So I've got my clam juice that's nice and hot. I'm gonna add this right her, right into the pot. And now I'm going to emulsify my clam chowder. Yeah. And while I'm doing this, actually, since it is blending for me, I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt, because I tried it already and I know that it needs a little bit more salt and a little pepper. And actually, I really like the cayenne effect. I would actually use paprika personally. Oh, these are good. These are nice, nice clams. Why, well, thank you. That makes me happy as a clam. I'm just gonna eat some more of your salt pork. Okay, so that's about the consistency I want. So it's smooth, but at the same time there's chunks. That's what I'm going for right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. See right in there, that's beautiful. And I am ready to plate up. Are you ready to plate up? I'm ready to plate up. Let's plate these bad boys. Oh, I'm ready to plate. Oh. Plating. Plate in time, guys. Plate in time. One last Should I get a good little mix in there? Chowder. Oh, look at those clams. Bacon. It's nice. Oh, yeah. Need a little room. Need a little room in there. Thanks for, the, thanks for the ladle. Hey, no problem, you know? You know? He gets himself like a real ladle and he gives me like a spoon. He's like, here. You know, I went and did all the work. There wasn't two ladles. I took the ladle. That's what happens. I'm plated. You plated? I'm plated. All right, I'm plated. Alrighty. Put that right there. Boom. All right, man. All right, I got my spoon. Oh, that looks delicious. You got your spoon. Yes. Let's taste. Alrighty, let's do it. Uh, are we starting with emerald or are we starting with? Uh... You know, I like the way yours looks. I'm gonna let's go with you. Go okay. with you first. Well, I'm throwing in more. All right, let's bring it back. Yeah. Bring it back. Let's go. Okay, let's do it. Make sure you get some of that All salt right. pork on there. Mm. It's good chowder. The salt pork garnish gives it a little kick. Yeah, you know, not as creamy as I like mine, but it's still a good chowder. I was surprised that it's not, that it isn't, um, I guess clammy isn't really a good word. It doesn't taste a lot like clams, you know, just because there was so much, you know, fresh clam and clam juice and all this stuff going into it. But it's uh, it's really really good. It's got more of like a potato chowder consistency it does. It does. and flavor to it. It's, like I feel like this would be like the perfect like baked potato chowder. It's a very good very good thing. It was more of a, a corn chowder, potato chowder. Sorry. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> just One of the vegetables. Have my soup. <laughs> Try my soup. Aha. That was a Coming to America reference, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. It was, it was. Try the soup. It's hot soup. Is the soup too hot? Taste the soup. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I just burned my tongue, but. Yeah, now that you can't taste it, this whole competition is shot. Well, that's really good, it's, it's, it's definitely more, um, they're too liquidy. It's almost they're, too liquidy. They're completely different they're in two the consistency. Soups. They're two completely different soups. I hate it when this happens, guys. Uh, they're drastically different. It's got great flavor. It's got spice. Uh, my nose is runny. My mouth is still burning from the temperature. actual temperature, not the heat from um, the spice. But yeah, and this one has just. A, Damn it. Ah, oh, man. They'd both be great in bread bowls. Ooh. <laughs> Um, um, as far as just straight up clam though, neither of them really have a clam taste. They don't. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that they, actually I'm not very surprised that mine doesn't have a big clam taste considering all I really used was that, you know, that clam juice. Yeah. Now obviously the clams also for my thing, but, and they're fresh, but I think it's, uh, I think, again, this is one of those ones where if you blend both recipes, oh, it would be perfect. This is good, but this is good too. Can we get someone in to taste? I think we need guest taster. Guest taster. We need it. Because they're two they're two very different. You're on, come on over. Hey. hey yeah, right. okay, hey. so what's happening, man? We got two different types what's of chowder happening? going. Found this guy on the street. 
<laughs> no, he actually found us, actually. Yeah. So that works, he works out here. Well. So it works out perfectly for us. <laughs> um, so I've got Alton Brown's clam chowder. <laughs> He's never met us before. Um, and he has Amaro Lagasse's recipe. Um, they're both great. They're just completely different. So yeah. by all means, we liked them both, unfortunately, too much. Um, Whatever so you we want, man. Which you one made you made better? Moo. Perfect. I like curly. It's very, it, this one's a little temperature hot, so just be prepared for that. So if I blow on it, blow on it. You, yeah, well, you can't see me. You just won't be able to taste anything. Yeah. Just oh, just kidding. <laughs> you, oh That's God. Really ah, no, I want good. this for dinner. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'll wait. Try this one. <laughs> You're like, then, wait, no, this is done. It's over. And then, and then, actually, you kind of. I feel like, yeah, this is part of it. So you gotta get that in there too. He's all, but I don't like clams. Yeah, not like a seafood. Oh, oh, well, in that case, don't eat the clam. Yeah, then go it's just. because you have that head on. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I, yeah, not rocking the Patriots hat. I'm rocking a New England hat. There's a difference. That is good. They're both good. I told you. This is hard. This is tough. I, th I think it, this would be my new diet. Is this clam <laughs> chowder diet? Chowder. chowder. It's gonna go well. <laughs> is that is that like the soup diet except yeah. it's chowder? Just chowder. I think you're gonna put on some weight it's with the this BC diet. BC and Adrian diet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the BC Adrian man chowder diet. I don't want to be any part of that diet. <laughs> um, so they're good. I commend you too. Thank you. <laughs> so who's the winner though? There's choose. Oh, there can be only one. Yeah, now you like have to Highlander. choose. So, being that I'm not such a like a creamy type guy. Oh. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well then, we know where you're going. I'm gonna have to go with. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. This was made with cream, ladies and gentlemen. This was not. So, that being said, the winner. <laughs> Adrian. Adrian doing Emerald's recipe and. Uh, a very good, close, close second, but completely different flavor would be Alton Brown's. Uh, that being said, thank you very much to our guest thank taste you. tester. But um, very tasteful and with elegance. Yeah, it it so works, because he's like with it. two tasteless hosts, yeah. so. Yeah, so it all balances out in the end, guys. <laughs> all right, well. My name is BC Hoffman. And I'm Adrian Bustamante. I'm Lee Rowan. This has been Recipe Wars. Please subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, Follow us on Twitter, and now subscribe to our email at RecipeWars.com. You guys keep watching, and we'll keep cooking.